about yogurt if you want. What is but going on also, with James' phone? We no, we're good. Talk We'd rather talk birds, but yeah. we're just passing the time. I do love yogurt, though. Thank you. <laughs> so welcome to Coffee and Corvids. For those that haven't joined us, I think most of you have before. Uh, my name is Sam Moore, and I'm the new Outreach Education Coordinator with IAS, and this is our third Coffee and Corvids already. It seems like some days April is like slowly ticking by, and other days it's going by pretty quick. So happy was tax day to everyone so um just to get you started usually i have a little like wake up trivia which we can do but brad a super awesome mnemonic game because mnemonics were uh suggested at the last one if you want to do it right now brad otherwise i can do my trivia yeah we can do it um what you need is uh either your your chat box open so you can put uh you can either type in true or false um or if you want to you can grab a piece of paper and you can hold it up to the screen and go like this if you think it's true or false um so you can either do that or pull up the chat screen and and, and what i've done and, and some of you guys may have seen this before and i know we actually did it with the ies uh, board of directors um, earlier this year but um i've gone through and and then I don't know if you guys have it, but um, here, here behind me, you can see all the different, uh, well, we're kind of cover up my posters right now, but lots of field guides because you guys all have about 53 field guides too, right? So I've gone through there and I pulled up a lot of the um, mnemonics that are listed for different bird species. And, and so I've written down about seven of them here. And uh, what we're going to do is play a little game here. And I'm going to... And, and, and you're not going to guess the species, per se. I am not. Guess whether that mnemonic that I just described uh, from a field guide is true. So it's from one of these field guides, or uh, it's not true. It's, it's BS that I just made up. So is it a real field guide uh, mnemonic, or is it a fake one? So sounds simple enough. So then all you do is just say true or false, whether you think it's a real one or not. And uh, fortunately, this is a a good game that you can't Google and change. So, so let's give this here a try here. So the first one, and I'm gonna describe it for you. Pup, 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 prick. So is that a real mnemonic to a bird, or is that a fake one? Pup, 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 prick. So true or false? A lot of trues. Everybody say true. No, false. <laughs> Wait, hold up again. Okay, there we go. Yep. So we got some, some FUs and true. Okay. Uh, number one, that is true. That is the mnemonic uh, description for the scissor tailed flycatcher from the Sibley Field Guide. There's number one. Number two, maids, 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 put out the tea kettle. The water's hot, 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 hot. <laughs> True or false? Maids, 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 put out the tea kettle. The water's hot, 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 hot. True, false. <laughs> Just a real, real mnemonic or a fake one? Okay, number two is true. Do you know what bird it's to? Song no, sparrow. It out. What is it? Song sparrow. Song sparrow. Uh, yeah, not house, but song sparrow. That is the song sparrow mnemonic, and uh, that comes directly from the Stokes Field Guide. Okay, ready for number three? Pish, pish, ker, ka ching, ka ching. Ch 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 ding. <laughs> pish pish ker ka ching ka ching ch 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 ding. True or false? Mnemonic from a field guide. We got a lot of field guides here. True or false? Okay, 
The correct answer is false. What is it? It's not a bird. It's a uh, trolley car. Close. <laughs> no, that was uh, that was false. That was the sound of a fifty-six k modem dialing up. <laughs> Number four. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. True or false? Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. True or false? See a lot of falses. No one else? Last chance? Okay, number four. True. True, that is the sound of a uh, willow ptarmigan comes from the Nat uh, Geo field guide. So look up your National Geographic, go back, go back uh, for willow ptarmigan. I may have one of those out in my backyard today. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Still in its white snowy plumage, right? <laughs> okay, ready? Number five. Swip. Repeat it. Whip. A lot of trues. Whip. Is that a mnemonic in a field guide? And what bird would it be? Do you want to know what bird? If you think, sure. I would say tohi, eastern tohi. Whip. Okay, number five is false. No, that's the sound of Spider-Man spidey things. <laughs> what that one was. Um, let's do uh, two more. So number six, um, R2-D2 on a sugar high. Real or fake written mnemonic in a field guide? I know this one. R2-D2 on a sugar high. True or false? A lot of trues. I'm able to fool a lot of you guys so far. A couple. R2-D2 on a sugar high. The answer for number six is true. Yes, it is true. You guys got it right. Um, what's the bird? Upland sandpiper. Not an upland. No. No. Let me get. Is it the blue gray gnat catcher? It's uh not a blue gray gnat catcher. R two D two on a sugar high. It's a vireo, uh, warbling vireo. Not a warbling vireo. Not a meadowlark. Come on, folks. Out at the grasslands in a couple weeks. Skunk bird. Bobolink. Bobolink. Oh. Is the R2 D2 on a sugar? <laughs> and that uh, was in an, in an ABA field guide that they described that. So, okay, one more. Um, number seven. Uh, ew, ew, I stepped in poo. Ew, ew, I stepped in poo. That's you behind Piper. <laughs> no, she's still working on her Kong. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. That's what, I like, know. you're outside behind her. No, she's a lady. She cleans up after herself. <laughs> Number seven. Ew, ew, I stepped in poo. False, false, false. It's true. There's a true from John. Brian says true. Sam, ew, ew, I stepped in poo. So the last one, number seven, was true. That is a true mnemonic uh, written um, in another ABA field guide. But the bigger question uh, is, uh, can you name the bird that would be, ew, ew, I stepped in poo? Real loud ringing sounds. Ew, ew, I stepped in poo. In fact, I will play the actual call and see if you can 
actually hear the mnemonic. That might be even funner to do here. So here's the here's the sound of the bird. Ew, ew, I stepped in poo. Well, yeah. is it a water thrush? It's not a water thrush. Yellow throated warbler. A. Backwards. Swainson's warbler. Swainson's warbler. That's the ABA description. So that's my um, uh, mnemonics, true or false bullshit game for you guys this morning. <laughs> if you got any other mnemonics, though, let us know. Maybe we can we can throw together another set of them. But that's what I got. We need some easier ones, ones we actually know. <laughs> Toop, 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 toop. Call it out. There you go. Cool. Thanks, Brad, for doing that. Um, now we'll just move into bird discussions. Kim, I swear you really jinxed it here because I can't even see across my driveway. It's snowing so bad. So not a whole lot of birding going on this morning for me. But anyone else? What what have you been up to? What have you been seeing? I did actually see my first uh, chipping sparrow in my backyard today, and uh, two tufted titmice. So it, you know, I mean, they're not rare birds, but uh, they were first of the season in in my backyard. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> Saturday, I was actually going to go out birding, and my target bird was. Uh, yellow bellied sap sucker, but I walked to the back of my property to talk to my grandfather, or my father-in-law, sorry. <laughs> and uh, there was a sap sucker on the tree in the back of my property, which was really nice. And then I had, um, I've been hearing them, brown creepers, but I haven't seen one. And I happened to walk out on the porch yesterday and there was one going up the tree. It was awesome. So basically, you don't even have to leave your house for the birds that you're looking for. You just wish it and it appears. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe that happens. Has he seen a lot of yellow rumped warblers? Downy woodpeckers, barred owls. I did see also not a uh, rare bird, but I saw an bluebird, my first one. I know they kind of stick around, but I was excited. Nobody's seeing anything exciting, huh? Even if they're not rare. <laughs> it's not my first Savannah Sparrow. I'm really bad at sparrows because they all kind of blend. So it was my first time actually seeing the yellow on the eye. So. That's awesome. Congrats. Those are great. You should have joined last week. You can go through our sparrow ID from last week. <laughs> that would have been helpful. I was actually in the field last week doing bird surveys, which is when I saw it. So um, I couldn't join because I was actually working. So. Well, that's like, yeah, that's like <laughs> Three weeks ago, I saw um, the northern hawk owl and they're not extremely common. I live in Alberta in the very central part. They're not extremely common here. They're usually way up north or down south. And so we have mostly great horned owls here, short-eared owls, the odd long-eared owl, which I have not spotted yet, and then of course a snowy. Um, so that was my first sighting of one. It was pretty cool. Awesome, that's great. You're from Alberta, Where, how did you hear about this? Uh, interestingly enough, it just came across my Facebook page as something I would be interested in. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. That's great. That's really cool that this kind of stuff is reaching out that far away to, um, even, you know, people in other countries. And it's really cool that it's, uh, reaching, you know, all over the state for us. 
Yeah, yeah. and I'm in Illinois. Uh, the only reason the only reason I joined the Indiana Audubon Society was for the Indiana Dunes Birding Festival to get the early registration. But I'm from Indiana, so like kind of connected, but definitely in Illinois. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear to see how far our reach was. I did try to get uh, one of our family friends from Minnesota to join. I think she'll join us next week. So good work stuff today. Is anybody noticing an increase? I don't know what you guys have there because I mean, obviously, we're going to have different, some different species, but we have uh, bald headed eagles here. But it's just usually like you'll see one a month, literally. And so far in the last month, I've seen nine. And for us, that's quite a bit. Is that common where you guys live? And I'm wondering why we have so many this year. It's kind of weird. I don't know if we have more mice or what it is. I have no idea. Bald eagles are typically going to be where there's water, like lakes and rivers and stuff. I live in the prairies and it's very dry. I live, I don't know if anyone knows Drumheller. It's like the dinosaur capital of the world. <laughs> I live close to that. It was kind of looks like Arizona, but it's like a little mini area. Anyways, it, I don't live near any lakes and rivers. That's why I do find it kind of odd that we have so many of them this year. To know what other people's opinions are, but. <laughs> You're probably right in the middle of migration right now. Bald eagles are, are heading northward. You know, we were probably peaking the end of March and first of April for us. Some of the eagles movement going on. I know uh, up in the UP at Whitefish Point, they're still getting a lot of bald eagles regularly flying by. And so I think just a lot of wandering birds are 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 just kind of moving through right now, and they may not be necessarily sticking around in the area where the eagles now have mainly moved through. And now here in Indiana, they're 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 obviously nesting, and starting to lay their eggs. Okay. Interestingly enough, when I was, um, I lived in Iowa for two years and there was basically no water there. And we saw tons of bald eagles and the people around said that they were like feeding on the hog farms when they'd throw them out, uh, like the dead carcasses. So I don't know how they got there, maybe migration and then just stopped or what, but there was a ton of them, like way more than you would expect. So maybe there's just something they're feeding on. Finn says they do feed on deer carcasses pretty regularly. Cool. I was just going to say that actually because um, a few obviously we've noticed up in the trees and I've seen a few maiden pairs but um, there are a lot, of, a lot of deer here like a lot of them. <laughs> hundreds of them are like exposed on a daily basis at this time of the year and more this year than normal. And so I have seen a few of those eagles eating on the carcasses. So yeah, maybe they are staying around because we also have some uh, more turkey vultures than normal as well this year. So that's interesting. But as for them, I don't think that it's possible for them to stay here and nest, is it? Does anyone know? I mean, that'd be pretty neat, but I don't know. We, I live in Northeast Indiana and we have quite a few um, nesting in the Eagle Marsh area. Well, some in the Eagle Marsh, Fox Island area, um, just outside of Fort Wayne. And then I saw some down at Salamone River near the dam. And that's a place where I, a lot of people report seeing eagles. Uh, Kieran's iPad wants to know if anyone has seen any hummingbirds yet. Yet. Looks like the consensus is no. <laughs> Not enough. Um, what about, has anyone gone out? I know last week we kind of talked about how it was getting difficult to um, do social distancing in certain areas, um, particularly at the parks. I know that a park that I frequent a decent amount was just shut down like half of their trails. And of course I didn't check online, online. Over there. So make sure that you are um, doing some checking before you go out and go birding. But yeah, if anyone has any recommendations or places that they've been or don't suggest um, to keep up with the social distancing.
Nada, huh? You guys are quiet today. Everyone's just in a funk from the snow, right? And this cold weather. <laughs> yeah, the last been... couple days have been pretty bummy. You know, it being super cold. Well, I'm in Chesterton. It was super cold and windy yesterday, and uh, it's snowing today, so it's uh, not doing real good for the spirits. <laughs> I can agree to that. <laughs> Gosh, it's real nice and sunny down here in central Indiana. It's a little cold, but it is beautiful today right now. In fact, they're outside mowing. But um, I did have a question, and I think I, you know, I have a one bird feeder where I get obviously a lot of house finches, but I do believe I did see, now last year I did have a purple finch, and I feel like I have had one again this morning, but um, somebody can answer this. They had, it look, they look so much alike, but this, this particular one that was at the gold, um, was at the feeder this morning with two gold fin finches, by the way, had a nice uh, deep red on the backside. His, his wings were out and it was, his backside was red, which made me feel like it was a purple finch. Um, the head was, what would be the markings? Cause I do, I do know I got one identified last year. I feel that one was migrating through. I only saw it for a short period in the spring and then he was gone and the house finches are there all year. So, but it's hard to tell. So anybody have any thoughts on purple finches? I see a purple finches tend to look like they've been dipped in like a raspberry dye all over, even on their brown parts. And they'll okay. have a, um, the females have a broad white line over their brow and on the males it's there too, but it's purple instead. Whereas on a, a house finch, it's, um, it's all brown there. But on the back side, like if they're, if they're at the feeder and, they're, and their wings are spread out like that and the back is just really a deep red, would you consider that? Because the features on the top look like a purple finch, but you know, again, that, I don't know. I have to, I, hopefully he sticks around so I get a better look at him. I didn't have my binoculars, but. I was just having to, was on the phone and had to just look out the window. Yeah, well, I think my coworkers don't like it when I talk about my birds while I'm on a, <laughs> on a work call. Yeah. So, so but whatever. One of, the, one of the challenges between a purple finch and a house finch is that as that red, can you hear me okay, Patty? Yeah, I can, Brian, thanks. As, as that red is being deposited while they're growing their feathers, the red coloration comes from food, and it's the, um, the pigments that they're getting from the food and converting okay. it into, and it grows out in the feather. So the more, the better quality food source they have, the better the coloration of the red. And the, the reds, yellows, oranges usually come from pigments from fruits, and then that there are some uh, insect exoskeletons that it'll, it'll come from. But as that red is deposited, the better the food source, the more red between a purple and a house finch, I mean, you're gonna get a lot of variation in the amount of red or the coloration, because if they have a lot of yellow pigments while it's growing, those feathers are growing out, those feathers mm -hmm. can look more orangey. House finches are really good about having more of an orangey or yellow look to them. Okay, okay. And so you, every once in a while in Indiana, you'll, you'll see a, a house finch that has a yellow coloration instead of red but the purple finches usually are gonna have most of that purplish red color. And one of the keys when you look at their head on their cheek, that, that purplish raspberry color will wash over the cheek. House finches usually just have a brown cheek um, with that, the rest of the coloration on the head being whatever that, that reddish, yellowish, purplish, orangish could be. Okay, well, then it, then he might have just been a male finch then, Brian, I don't know. I'll have to, but I like the idea. So really that the purple finch, it'll have to be, it'll have to be over his cheek. It'll have to really extend, because what you're saying is basically, it sounds like the male house finches can get quite red this time of year, which we know they do, but this one was extremely, but then again, their food source is great, not including my bird feeder, but there's big spruce there and there there's a lake right near next to my to our to our condo. I mean, there's just a lot of sources for these birds. I mean, it's a beautiful area to live in. Um, so that could be why it looks so good. I don't know. 
Kristen's showing a, a little comparison, like the Sibley app has a good one for showing comparison. The purple finch on top, the house finch on bottom. That, okay. You know, the, the purple finch still has a brown cheek, but it has that, that color wash over the brown, uh, whereas the house finch usually just has just the brown cheek. Um, the wash also goes into the back a lot more on a purple finch. That looks uh, good, Kristen. I do have Sibley, so I will look that up. Um, yeah, check it out. Uh, what, uh, thank you, Brian. That's those. That's good information because now it makes me think that maybe that was not, and I will have to be more more attentive in the next couple of days to see. But um, last year I did. I mean, I finally targeted one in, and it was it. I looked at the guy for the longest time, but so far not. But I do feel like they will come through if they're not here already. Right. Now is a good time for purple finches to be moving through and hitting people's bird feeders as well. So okay. really pay attention to any of those, those house finch-like birds coming through. Okay, thank you, thank you. That comparison part of the Sibley's apps app is one of the things that I absolutely love about it, is that you can get on there if you have, you know, an issue or, or having trouble IDing a bird and it's similar to something else and you've never seen one before, it's extremely helpful to have that at ha in hand, you know, while you're out in the field to be able to, you know, compare like, oh, I, I'm not sure, you know, this is a house finch or, or purple finch. You can put them right there next to each other, read through everything, see the pictures, you know, right there up close. It's, it's such a great app to have on your phone. Well, and that, so that's a really good question, Kristen, because I actually had a question, uh, a question for Brad about that when he, you did um, um, a uh, webinar just, I don't know, less than a week ago where you, it was a beginning birding one, and I was doing some other stuff, listening to part of it, but you had talked about um, the Sibley app on the phone, and which I, you know, was thinking about, because the only one I have on my phone is the Audubon um, one, and um, probably because I'm just, because I use that when I do my e-birding for the Carmel Clay Parks. So I guess what, what I wanna know is how much space does that take on our iPhone if we actually go ahead and purchase that and put it on? I mean, it sounds fascinating, like what Kristen was saying. I like the idea of being able to bring the birds down and maybe compare, do more than what the Audubon one does, which is just pulls it up. And, and, and it's fine for what I'm kind of doing. And most of the time I'm at Central Park. I mean, that's the park that I cover for um, Carmel Clay Parks as far as bird monitoring. But I really want more than that. And, but how much of that is gonna take space on my iPhone is what I wanna know. Do I need, need to get rid of other apps or? I just looked it up. It's uh, 499 megabytes for the Sibley guide. And, uh, you know, so for, for me, I got, I got a 64 gig, so. Um, so it really isn't taking up that much space, but if you got okay. 16 or 32 and you got a lot of photos, that might be more of an issue, um, you know, for comparison also, but you know, that, that was big when it came out, what is it, five, six years ago, but, but anymore today, you know, I also downloaded last year that Warbler guide as an app and that one's taking up 668 meg, uh, megabytes. Like, um, I would compare that with some of the other birding apps, but, um, uh, or at least field guide apps, but it doesn't take up, you know, anything compared to some of these other ones. Um, I'm just looking here trying to find another birding app that's taking up any kind of space. And, and uh, you know, I got birds near me. That's only five megabytes. So, and all those other field guides. So I just, I got rid of them because Sibley is my number one now. And I just didn't need the other ones uh, on my phone. Okay. Okay. A space issue at the time. Um, why I don't have all those, but, but really it's all I've ever needed though is that Sibley. Okay, and then you said something else about it wouldn't use, it wouldn't use your data as much, or you, it or it stores it. I, I don't know if it was storing it um, somewhere else, and once you used it or whatever, because that's the thing. When I'm using the Audubon, it's like using data when I'm out on the trail if I have it open, um, you know. And you know, while I would have enough data, my daughter's on my plan, and and she uses all my data. So um, it's like, would that be? I mean, is that that, that to me would be a benefit if I, if I could just keep that open while I'm out. Yeah, um, so that we were really talking about was, was the, 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 the two camps that, that apps seem to be coming in. One is that whether 
all of the information in that app is stored in the file that you download on your phone. And then when you're using it, so Sibley, you don't use any data to be using the Sibley app. It's all based right there in the actual app in the 500 megabytes. So okay. you can be um, completely offline without reception or even off with no cellular data and still be able to use all the functionality of the Sibley app. But the other ones like iBird and Audubon, they're constantly pulling off the web. And so those are the yeah. ones be using data or they're just not going to work. Um, the other good one that, that was mentioned was uh, the Merlin bird ID. That's 40 megabytes. Um, yeah, I have the Merlin bird ID on mine. But I'm thinking um, that's, so you got a smaller file there, but I'm thinking that one's using the, the internet to be able to, to, to answer that you're okay. Using. That's good. Thank you both. Yeah, I know all three of you, Kristen, Brad, and Brian. Thank you. <laughs> I know with the Merlin bird ID too, you have to download all those packs and then it asks for where your location is, which helps a lot. I think you can do it offline and choose a location, but usually it wants your location wherever you're at. So it would use the internet for sure. I was gonna say, Brad touched on it a little bit, the um, Warbler Guide, um, that app is amazing because that book is so thick. And if you're really getting into Warblers and wanting to ID them, it is the best thing to have in hand in the field because of one certain feature. Okay, so I have the app pulled up. So if you click on a bird, so I'm gonna click on Cape May warbler. For one, it shows you the warbler here and comparison birds that look like it, like there's a Blackburnian and a Magnolia warbler. But the best thing about this whole app is there's a little button right up here that says 360. So you click on that and you can move this bird any position you want. And that's what I love about this because a lot of the time you're seeing warblers from the underside. And this is a, you know, a super distinguishing mark for warblers, the, the tail, you know, the undertail. And I just think it's the greatest thing in the world to be able to that have an app wow. that can do that, that you can see this bird from every angle. Now is that the, Bottom Kristen, side. that's your warbler app that you're talking about? The warbler guide. The warbler guide. Right. Awesome. Thanks everyone for that. And just a reminder that webinar that um, Patty was talking about is our Facebook live event that's on Saturdays now. So when you're not at work, um, it's on 10 a.m. Eastern. It's just on Facebook live. So you don't have to log into Zoom or anything. And um, I believe Brian, you're doing the next one, aren't you? Yeah, about bird feeders. So make sure to join in this Saturday as well. Um, but the Warbler ID is a great segue into our ID game for the day because guess what the theme is? Warblers, yay! Okay, so just give me a minute to uh, get this screen sharing set up. Um, for those of you that haven't joined before, we just use the chat ID, the chat for typing in your answers. Um, you can say it, but then I can't keep track of like who's winning. Um, if you want to say it, you can, but um, all the winners at the end uh, will get a, we don't have warblers here. Oh no. <laughs> well, you'll be testing your skills to the max then. <laughs> um, but yeah, the winner at the end, I will make sure to send me your address so I can give you an IAS pri sticker. And then all the winners at the end of April will go into a drawing to win some birds and beans coffee. So um yeah. I have to leave now. Thank you. It's been interesting. Oh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, Janet. <laughs> All right. Just a second while I get this up here. And you can probably don't look. Come on. All right, can you all see the little owl meme? Yes, yes, okay, good. Okay, so our ID has 
Perfect. All right, he has some um, bird songs that I'll just give me a second to play. <laughs> and then some of them are just photo ID. So we have a little bit of everything. All right, and the first one is of course a song. And song number one. It's you not all... you, I stepped in poo. <laughs> no. You all heard that, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I can play another one too. These are gonna be a little trickier. Same bird, song number one. Other guesses. They're always tricky. <laughs> All right, the answer to this one is actually an American Red Start. Those guys. <laughs> they are the worst. <laughs> Some strong feelings about American Red Starts. All right, the next one I believe is just a photo ID. This guy. <laughs> All right, any other guesses? This guy is the blue winged warbler. Nice work. I believe Julia got that one first. Oop, all right, this guy. Any other guesses? Oh, you guys are good with the picture ID. It is the Tennessee Warbler. Brian, I'm guessing that's what you meant by that. One. I'll give that to you. <laughs> okay, next one is a song, bird song number two. Here we go. You guys are good at mosquitoes. I'll play it one more time so you guys can hear it. All right, so that one was the chestnut-sided warbler. I believe Kristen got that one. Mosquitoes probably in there, right? <laughs> Cats are freaking out the bird calls. <laughs> They're looking for something to hunt, right? All right, next one is just a photo ID. Mm 
All right, answer to this one is the Prairie Warbler. Nice work. Uh, who got that first? I think Caitlin got that. All right, next up, song. Ooh, tough ones. All right, this is song number three. Play another one. <laughs> Brad's giving hints. <laughs> It is indeed the Magnolia Warbler. Nice job. I think Julia got that one first. Brad, what's a mnemonic for Magnolia Warbler? Do you have one? I don't use a specific mnemonic. What I usually think of is it's a lot of times a faster and slightly broken up chestnut sided warbler. Because um, it is a lot, it does sound a lot like that. Please be pleased to meet you, but it's not, it is defined and it's a little, I think a little higher pitch. So when I hear what, what I think is a funny sounding chestnut sided, then I'm usually thinking Maggie. All right, next guy, photo ID, no song. You guys are quick on the photo ID with the warblers. <laughs> Arrows last week, not so much. All right, this guy is the hooded warbler. Nice work. Who got that first? Chris, Julia got that one. All right, next up. Oh, song. Sometimes I like seeing all of your reactions right when I play the song. <laughs> Just the facial expressions, like, ah, no. All right, next song. Maybe? One second. <laughs> Hold on, we're having some technical difficulties with the songs. Um. Okay, we may have to come back to that song. It is not loading. Sorry. If you need a good place. Okay. Okay, one second, Brad's gonna help me out with the song because this page is not loading. Okay, here we go, ready? Everybody hear that? Yes. Any other guesses? All 
right, that guy was the Louisiana water thrush. <sighs> Tough one. There he is. At least my guess had a state. <laughs> so close. Hey, for not knowing warblers, that, you got a state in there. <laughs> Nobody wins. All right, next up should just be a picture ID. This guy is the pine warbler. Who got that first? Finn, nice work. All right. Next, no idea. Ooh, bird song number five. Let's see if this works. When in doubt, it's always pine. Let me see if this page works better. There we go. Been hearing this one recently. I'll play it one more time, see if you have any other guesses. All right, that guy was the yellow rumped warbler. Nice work. Well, Kristen with her butter butt. I like the code. <laughs> Give it to Kristen and Gail. <laughs> All right, next. Picture ID. Is Julia so fast? <laughs> She's been practicing. This guy is the black throated green warbler. Nice job. A lot of you got that one. <laughs> All right, bird song number six. Oh, thanks for joining us, Lucas. Here is bird song number six. the common yellow throat. Nice job. <laughs> Coming up with our own mnemonics. All right, next we got picture ID. Mm -hmm. Oh, all sorts of guesses on this one. Warblers are hard. I agree. I decided putting this together. Basically, yellow birds is what they should be called, with occasional other colors. <laughs> All right, this guy is the Wilson's Warbler. Got that. 
I believe Julia got that one again. Nice job. Okay, next one. Song. You should see them in the fall. All right, here's the other song. I'm sorry, I wish I could just have you say it, but then I can't keep track. <laughs> All right, it is the yellow warbler. Nice work. Next up should just be photo ID. The one other colors, you know, not yellow. Consensus is that it's the black pool. You are correct. Nice job. Next one, song number eight. There we go. All right, I'll play another one. That guy was the Nashville Warbler. Brad, I like your code word for that one. <laughs> Ooh, nice work. Just gonna keep typing. <laughs> as many guesses as you want, I guess. It's however fast you can type sometimes. All right, picture ID. <laughs> Caitlin's resorted to the uh, reducing the typing. <laughs> I like it. I had to shorten it. <laughs> it is, how do you pronounce that? Prothonotary warbler? We didn't have those wherever I was at. I always mess it up. <laughs> All right, thank you, Finn. We got a little competition between Kayla and Julia. That's all right. All right, next up, last song, bird song number nine. Oh, I might be having issues with this one as well. Hold on, Brad might have to help me out. Sorry guys, my internet, I'm surprised it was working. I was getting scared that it wouldn't even work for Zoom today. Everybody's on apparently. <laughs> Ever silent bird. <laughs> that should be a trick one. Pretend to play something, see if you get it. Obviously, this is one of those super high pitched sounds that 
one of the first ones to go if you start losing your, your high end of your hearing. I can hear it better now. <laughs> Any other guesses? It's a tough one. Tiger. Tiger. <laughs> All right, that was the Cape May Warbler. There he is. All right, there's one more ID, last one, one of my favorites. There you go. One of the non-yellows. It is the Cerulean Warbler. Nice work. She's superhuman typing speed. <laughs> Maybe in the last Coffee and Corvids, we can just have a blurt out and Brad can help me see who said it first or something like that. <laughs> Give everyone the advantage who can't type fast. <laughs> Request for owls next week. That could be arranged. Sinking shorebirds would be nice and difficult too. <laughs> all right, that is all I have for you guys. So thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys, we can stay on and continue talking birds or if you have to go, that's fine too. But uh, make sure to tune in to our Facebook live event on Saturday morning at 10 Eastern. Otherwise join us next week, same time, same place. I have a question that's not bird related. How do you get those cool backgrounds for this? Oh. On your, on your Zoom, Kristen, where it, um, when you first log in, there's a little um, thing right at the corner that says you can um, uh, add a virtual background. Okay. So if you download, I have like different ones. This just happens to be Central Park on a really nice day like it is today. Um, I have other ones that I use sometimes sunset when I'm talking to some friends at night, um, just to change it up a little bit. But you download your own pictures and then you can choose it right before you come in online. Kristen, are you on your computer right now? Yeah. On your lower left where you says stop video, uh -huh. hit the little arrow and then you'll see choose virtual background. Right. Right. Oh. And then you can add it, you can add it from there. You just add you download your picture and then if you already have the picture on your computer, then you just download it onto your virtual background. Look, see Brad's just changing his around. <laughs> Maybe that's I'm gonna, I'm gonna change I'm gonna change mine. There we go. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice one in, in the West Virginia mountains, one of my favorites. Can I add my own pictures to this? Like I just click yes. this. Yeah. yeah. You can add your own pictures. That's what I did with mine. That was sea kayaking. That's so cool. It's very cool. It doesn't work on my computer. See, I look all pixelated or something. <laughs> just I makes it more interesting. Yeah. Maybe that should be part of our ID, whatever background Brad has, and he can switch it. <laughs> really test your skills. <laughs> this, this forces me to clean up the room, so. Yeah, my <laughs> office is really- No, I think it's, it's so, they, so they can't see what your room looks like. That's what I ended up doing. <laughs> right. That one's a little better. Got a little, few little tree branches in there. Ooh, I like oh, that. I did it! Yay! <laughs> That's so cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. See you on Saturday. Thank you.